One of my favorite ways to use the Kato board is to teach my dog how to stay. Now a stay can be used in a variety of places, including when we're eating dinner or maybe even we're having guests over to visit and we don't want our dogs jumping up on those guests. That stay is one of the most valuable behaviors that we can teach our dogs. And it's made super easy when we have a perch such as the Kato board to help our dogs learn where they need to stay and what behavior they actually need to do. So the way we start this is first we have to teach our dogs to move on to the board itself. And to do that, we're actually gonna put the board on the ground and if they look at the board, if they put a paw on the board, any behavior that indicates they're interested in the board itself, we're gonna go ahead and mark and reward that. Pretty soon our dog's gonna realize that interacting with the board itself gets them what they want, the treats. So my dog is offering one foot on, they're offering two feet on, I can slowly build that into the behavior of getting all four feet on. When they do that, I'm gonna pay them multiple times. So I'm gonna reward, reward, reward with them staying on the board, and then I'm gonna go ahead and release them off. I can use a release word such as go or okay, um, just be really careful if you choose the word okay, if you use that word a lot in your regular vocabulary. Now, a couple of things to remember. We wanna make sure that we're rewarding our dogs at a variable rate of reinforcement. This means it's not every two seconds, it's not every five seconds, it's not every 30 seconds. We don't wanna be predictable with this because the more predictable we are, the more our dog learns that, hey, that reward comes every two seconds. If I don't get it, I might as well just get off because it's never ever gonna come. So the more unpredictable we can be at the foundation phases, the easier it's gonna be for our dog to generalize their stay and start helping us fade those rewards out. I also wanna make sure I'm varying the number of rewards my dog gets per stay. So instead of always three rewards before that release, sometimes two, sometimes seven, sometimes just one. Now, remember, we wanna set our dogs up for success the best we can. That means that we wanna release our dogs before they release themselves, or reward our dogs before they get too antsy and start to get um, a little impatient and jump off of that board. So to do that, we wanna make sure that if our dog does make a mistake, we're not gonna reprimand them, we're not gonna yell at them, we're gonna take a note that, oh, put it, pushing it 30 seconds between rewards is a little bit much. So next time I'm gonna cut it back, make sure my dog is successful, reward them every 10 and 15 seconds, and then release them off before they release themselves. Also take into account the distractions that are around you. So if there are a lot of distractions, so people walking around, other dogs, some wildlife, some really interesting smells, or maybe you're cooking dinner, we wanna make sure that we decrease the amount of time of the stay, as well as increase how often we're rewarding our dog. Those distractions are gonna increase the difficulty of the stay behavior. And so in order to help our dog be successful, we wanna make sure that we're decreasing the overall difficulty, so making it easier for the dog to stay while those distractions are present. So that's it. That's how we teach our dogs to stay using the Kato board. The next step is to increase the duration, so increasing the amount of time between those rewards, introducing some distractions, so we'll be talking about that in a later video, as well as increasing the amount of distance you have from your dog while they are staying. Do those things gradually, making sure to set up your dog for success, and keep those sessions nice and short and fun for you and your dog. Happy training!